The Legend of Tan Veen Mountain God Once upon a time, there was a woodcutter who, every morning, carried a hammer into the forest to cut wood. Every time, he cut down some dry trees in the forest, and when he was burdened, he returned, but this time he intended to cut down another hardwood tree to bring back to support the thatched hut, so he had to go deep into the forest. While walking, he suddenly heard a child crying. He stopped to listen to see where the crying was coming from and saw in front of him, under a large clump of trees, a very large wild goat digging up a pile of hay with its front legs. The sound of a child crying from the pile of grass came from the grass. Dot. The woodcutter crept up and hid behind a large tree nearby to see what the goat was doing. The animal very gently dug through the pile of grass, gradually revealing a red, plump baby. Then it lay down to breastfeed the baby. The child hissed to fill his breasts with milk. After a moment, the goat stood up, licked the child's shaggy hair and ran away. As soon as the goat left, a flock of birds flew in and covered the baby with dry grass. In the blink of an eye, they flew away. The woodcutter muttered to himself, This child's fate is very strange. He went to dig through the pile of dry grass and saw that it was a boy. He picked it up and brought it home to raise. The baby grew up very quickly. The woodcutter took care of it like his own child with a strange destiny. He named the baby K.Y. When he grew up, K.Y. was very healthy. Every day, K.Y. carried a hammer and followed his adoptive father into the forest to cut firewood. One day, K.Y. cut down a tree big enough for two people to hug, from dawn to dusk, but it still wasn't finished, so he had to give up and leave. The next morning, when he reached the base of the tree to continue cutting it, he was very surprised. The big tree that had been cut down yesterday was now completely intact, as if no hammer had ever touched it. Seeing that, K.Y. did not feel discouraged. He gave strong hammer blows to the tree trunk that he had cut down the day before. Although he tried his best, by dusk he still had not finished cutting down the tree. Early the next morning, K.Y. picked up the hammer again and was about to continue the work he had left unfinished, when he saw that the cut from the previous day was the same again. He was not discouraged and started chopping again, but by the time he was embarrassed, he still hadn't finished chopping. This time he didn't come back. He climbed a nearby tree to watch how the tree heals itself at night. At midnight, the moon and stars filled the sky. Suddenly, an old man with a cane slowly walked towards the half-cut tree. The old man pointed at the tree with a stick, and in the blink of an eye, the cut mark was back as before. K.Y. quickly jumped down from the tree and ran to ask the old man. I was about to cut down a big tree with great difficulty. Why did you ruin my work like that? The old man replied, I am Tai Bok Tin Kwan. I don't want anyone to cut down this old tree. Well, I'll give you a stick so you can go find a small tree to cut down. Having finished speaking, the old man gave K.Y. the walking stick in his hand and then disappeared. One day while playing along the river, K.Y. saw a big snake with its head crushed and dead. A long time ago, K.Y. held a stick and pointed at the snake's head. Suddenly, the snake came back to life, waved its tail, raised its head to look at K.Y., then crawled into the river and disappeared. One evening K.Y. was sitting in a thatched hut when a handsome young man dressed neatly brought treasures to thank K.Y. He called himself Tiu Long, 
serving the son of the Dragon King in the South Sea. He was beaten to death by a buffalo herdsman on the river bank and was saved by K.Y. the other day. K.Y. definitely does not accept gifts. The young man was confused and tried to invite K.Y. to the aquarium to play. He gave K.Y. a tube of rhinoceros to divert the water down. When K.Y. came down to visit, the Dragon King was very happy and held a grand banquet for him. When he returned, the Dragon King sent him all kinds of strange things under the sea, but K.Y. definitely refused to accept them. Afterwards, the Dragon King took out a book from the chest and told him, You saved my son's life. I don't know what to give in return. Now you won't accept any gift, so I would like to give you this book. Using this book, he will get whatever he wishes for. He receives the wish book and returns to earth. From then on, he prays to see and have the magic to transform into a god who saves humanity. The god went through the mouth of the Benfu Lake, followed the big river, flowing upstream, looking for a high place with beautiful scenery to settle down. Arriving at a place, seeing a towering three-story mountain, round like a canopy, the deity opened a path through caves and streams to the top of the mountain and transformed it into a castle to live in. Once I settled down, I often went down the mountain to see the beautiful scenery and used many spells to save people. The mountain the god lives on is Tan Veen Mountain, so people call him the god Tan Veen or Sun Tin. Thank you for joining us for today's fairy tale. We hope these stories bring joy and meaning to your day. If you love our channel, please hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any exciting tales. Wishing you a good night and sweet dreams. See you in the next story.